Hi boys and girls, it's Friday and it's April the 3rd. Hey, today is the day you need to say your memory verse to me if you haven't already. Remember, you're going to say John 14, 6. You're either going to send me a video or you're going to call me on the phone. And if I haven't heard from you, I'm going to call you. Remember, you can even do a Marco Polo, which is kind of fun. I learned how to do that. I'm not real good at it, so you teach me some new tricks. Let's practice our memory verse together. Are you ready? Here we go. John 14, 6. Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father, that's God, except through me. Not Mrs. Kraft, but through Jesus. He died on the cross for us. One more time. Ready? John 14, 6. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And that's Jesus. So today, call me. Send me a video, do something, or I will be knocking on your door so I can hear your memory verse. Well, today we're going to continue our story about Jesus. Do you remember yesterday we talked about Palm Sunday, the triumphal entry? Well, today we're going to talk about what happens next, which is called the Lord's Supper. Yesterday in our story, Jesus told two disciples to go into the village and ask a man for his donkey. Do you remember that? That man didn't know Jesus, but God had already prepared his heart, and he said yes, that they could use his donkey. Well, today, Jesus is going to tell two of his disciples to go into the village again, and he's going, they're going to follow a man carrying a jug of water. Can you carry a jug of water like that? I'm afraid if I carried a jug of water like that, it would be splashed all over the floor. Well, Peter was one of those disciples, and God, Jesus, it is God, God and Jesus are the same, but Jesus said to him, he said, go and follow that man, follow him to his house, and say, the Lord has master and need of your house today. And the man's going to say willingly, you may use my house. Can you imagine, just like yesterday, we said, well, if somebody came to borrow mom or dad's car, and they just handed over the keys? Well, what if somebody came to your house today? Remember, we have that social distancing thing going on. But if they came to your house and said, you need to leave. We need to use your house. That would be awful strange, wouldn't it? But this man's heart was already prepared by the Lord. He showed them a room up on the top of his house that had couches and tables. It was perfect for 12 people to gather around. And Jesus. So the man obeyed. His heart was willing. Do you have a willing heart today? Are you ready to obey God and what he wants you to do today? Well, boys and girls, Jesus and his disciples gathered around on those couches in that special room that was prepared just for them. All 12 of the disciples were there. And while they were there, Jesus said to them, he said, today we're going to have a feast. We're going to remember the Passover. Do you remember what the Passover was about? The Passover was when Jesus remembers the um, Passover in Egypt. Remember they put the blood on the doorpost and then the death angel would pass over. Those were the Israelites. And they escaped where the firstborn was killed. Remember Moses had a hard heart. He didn't want to obey Moses. He didn't want to listen to anything about God. Don't have a hard heart. Have a willing heart. Well, they're gathered around this room and Jesus is telling them that something very special is going to happen. And he's telling them that he is going to have to die. Well, you know what? They got so worried about themselves, him going to heaven, they started arguing amongst themselves. Okay, raise your hand. Have you ever argued? Have you ever gotten in trouble for fighting with your words? Mm -hmm. They did not do a good job. They were not obedient. They were selfish. They were thinking of themselves. They weren't even listening to what Jesus was saying. They were more concerned with who was going to be the boss, who was going to sit next to him in heaven. They kept asking all these questions, and Jesus is realizing they are missing the point. What's the point, boys and girls? The point is Jesus is preparing to die. He is preparing to pay for our sins. Well, boys and girls, I'm a sinner. You're a sinner. A sinner is anyone that has done wrong in the eyes of Jesus. Do you think this arguing was a sin? I think it was so too. All the years that they had been on earth and they watched Jesus do all these miracles, they had missed the most important point. Jesus had come to die. He wasn't going to be their earthly king. He 
he was going to be their heavenly king. Well, do you think the disciples felt ashamed or embarrassed when Jesus slowed them down and said, Stop. Listen to me, please. Do you think they were embarrassed? I think they were. You know, sometimes even in class they get a little embarrassed at times because you might say something wrong or do something wrong, get your color changed. Maybe at home even you do some wrong things. Home is a place where I know I got in trouble. Maybe my mouth got me in trouble. I said unkind things to my brother or sisters. Or maybe I even hit somebody. Mm -hmm. Maybe I didn't do a job I was supposed to. Maybe I had a bad attitude. Those are all sins. Those are things that separate me from Jesus. That's right. Well, boys and girls, Jesus has a child. You see this? And he has a cup. We're going to talk about those things. Before they could have their meal, Jesus said, You have to learn to be a servant. What? A servant? Do you like to be a servant to your brothers or sister or for mom and dad? Sometimes it's fun to wait on everybody. Sometimes it's fun to pretend and put a towel over your arm and, Hello, sir, how are you today? What would you like to drink? Would you like water or milk? Yeah, that's right. But this is really, Jesus was really talking about the servant, the a heart of a servant. It was customary in that day to come in from outside, take off your sandals at the door, and someone would wash your feet. Usually a servant would wash your feet. Wash your feet? Do you do that before you come in your house? When Mrs. Kraft was in Thailand on a missions trip, every day we took our shoes off outside the door of the house where we were visiting. And we didn't wash feet, but you went in foot, um, footless, I was going to say that doesn't make sense, barefoot, because that was a sign of respect. They're washing their feet because their feet were dirty. The sandals were open. Dusty roads. They didn't wear socks. Did you see any disciples in pictures they'll ever see? Any disciples in pictures with socks on? No. They were always barefooted in sandals. But no one had offered. They were too busy thinking about themselves. So Jesus took off his outer garment. He knelt on the floor. He filled a basin full of water. He got a towel. And he asked each disciple to come up and have their feet washed. Well, that didn't seem right. Something was wrong with this picture. And when it came to Peter, Peter said, Oh, Lord, you can't wash my feet. I need you, to, if you're going to wash my feet, wash my whole body. What does that mean? Does Peter need his whole body washed? Well, Jesus stopped him and explained what he needed that you understand. Peter said, Lord, I need you to wash all of me. Not just my feet aren't clean, but I'm all unclean. Peter was talking about the outside, but Jesus is going to talk about the inside. What part of us is unclean? What part of us needs fixed? That's right, it's our heart. You know, boys and girls, have you ever seen the wordless book? My heart was black with sin until the Savior came in. His precious blood, I know, has washed me white as snow. And in God's word, I'm told, I'll walk the streets of gold. I'll, want, I'll praise and worship Him each day, and read my Bible and pray. So my heart was black with sin, until Jesus' blood came in. He washed my heart white as snow. Snow. You know, we didn't have very much snow in Ohio this year, but snow is clean. Snow is perfect before someone walks in. And that's what God wants. He wants a clean heart. Peter's heart, he thought was clean, but he had still things stopping him from believing everything that Jesus said. Peter says, If you don't wash, if I don't wash you, you have no part in me, Jesus said. We are in Christ the moment we invite him into our hearts to be our Savior. But Jesus did say, If I don't wash you, your feet, you have no part with me. After we're born into God's family and become his children by inviting Jesus into our heart, we're not perfect. We're not sinless. We still do mistakes. Mm -hmm. This is crap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We are never sinless until we get to heaven. That's right. As his children, we want to obey. But sometimes we're unkind. Sometimes we're selfish. And God knows our hearts. He wants us to read our Bible. Practice our memory verse. He wants us to trust what the preacher's saying and teachers are saying and mommies and daddies are saying. But you know what? We need to stay in fellowship with him. 
if you leave what sin come in, you're building the wall higher and higher. And it's keeping Jesus from reminding our mind that we've done something wrong. After Peter had heard Jesus' explanation, he said, Lord, don't wash my feet, just my feet, wash all of me. Wash my hands, wash my body. But Peter said, no, Peter, you're wrong again. One who has bathed all over only needs to have his feet washed to be entirely clean. Jesus was emphasizing here that when, Jesus, when Christians sin and fail, we get dirty with our thoughts or our actions, okay? He doesn't need to, he doesn't stop being God's child. He's still God's child. I'm still belong to Jesus. I just need to confess my sin. Jesus wants us to have a clean heart. Well, Jesus went on to say to him that someone in that room still did not have a clean heart. Do you know who that is? Do you know which disciple does not have a clean heart? And he was saying, Judas, you are right. Jesus went on to say, not all of you are clean. He knew that Judas Iscariot was in the room and then Jesus, Judas had never asked Jesus to take away his sins or to believe in what Jesus was doing. Jesus said to Judas, <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry about that. I knew it was coming. Jesus sat at the table and his heart was filled with sorrow and sadness. And he looked at his disciples and he says, Yes, it is true. One of you will betray me. One of you will go to someone else and tell about me. Tell me where I am. He says, the one who I dip the bread in the sauce and share it, that person is the one who will betray me. The boys and girls, they all looked around the table. Is it me, Lord? Is it me? Is it me that's going to be like, Lord, I would never do that. But Judas knew it was him. He was the treasurer of the disciples. I mean, he kept the money. He was in charge of making sure that they had the money to buy the bread or to have food to eat. He took his money and left. Can you tell what time of day it is? It's night. He snuck out at night. The other disciples thought he was just going to buy more food. But instead, he had made a plan with the scribes and Pharisees. Do you remember those scribes and Pharisees that were standing behind Jesus when the little children were praising him? Looking for a way to catch Jesus in a fault? Judas had already made a plan with them. He is going to go meet with them. Tomorrow, well not tomorrow, actually Tuesday, we will find out more what happens. Okay, So I'll talk to you on Tuesday. Don't forget to call me or video me, video you, with our memory verse. Don't forget. Okay? Have a great day. Bye, boys and girls.